Hi, how are you doing? This is your friendly neighborhood random guy. And if you barely find anything useful entertainment in this video please like and subscribe. In today's video, I decided to talk about something different. You have heard about Mad Max movies, I am pretty sure you must have. I have seen all four of Mad Max movies and has played the two games. The Nintendo one as well as the one which was made by Obelnak Studios. I played the Warner Brothers game for 4 years so you can say I have enough experience of that game. I like the idea of Mad Max World. Let me begin with how I was exposed to the Mad Max World, I had started playing the NES games and soon I found myself playing the Mad Max game. At first I thought it must be some sort of 90s famous gaming franchise. The Nintendo game I played gave me an impression that they're in a post-biochemical warfare world and everyone is literally mad, only Max is the sane one left. That mankind is reduced back to hunting instinct. Well even if you look at it that way, it all perfectly fits well. Then I forgot about the world of Mad Max until 2014 or 15 in which the Fury Road movie was released. Then I made some conclusion that in Mad Max world their gangs ruling the uninhabited areas and Max is part of special force who are fighting to restore law and order, meanwhile government can't liberate those lands. Mind you at that time I had not read the whole history and backstory of Mad Maximum the same year I saw all three Mad Max movies which were made even way before urbanization in our country. 1970s we were on self-survival mode. Have cattle, in the lodge in farming. I completed the whole series with two games and four movies. I found Mad Max the most interesting character in whole sci-fi genre, mind you I am a veteran with 500 top movies and 500 comics along with thousands of games in my experience. The other top action-packed sci-fi characters like Judge Dredd, Cowboy Bebop, The Goon, Dan Dare etc. I have seen them all. I didn't like the superpower thing in sci-fi, so all these are non-superpower, pure sci-fi worlds. The things I liked about Mad Max is his everything, his iconic outfit, his iconic car, the people and towns of Wasteland, all perfectly fit as if it was some sort of part of history book or must have happened in some other dimension. Shit. With all that being said, here are few things I missed out about Mad Maximum number one is how did Max survive the apocalypse, the nuclear war. I didn't find any story. In fact it's a topic on which a whole movie can be made about. They can show us what was Max doing at the time of World War III or nuclear war and how he managed to discover an underground nuclear base for the presidents, literally whole movie can be made about survival in an underground bunker, fighting other scavengers to survive in there. And finishing off their king like he had done with Immortan Joe. Or another myth. No one else has came out alive out of the deep lower section of nuclear chamber, and Max goes in there to find Hulk-like zombies or anything like. Or probably Max discovered an ancient city of Atlantis in the lower section of underground nuclear chamber, shit that would add another myth over few myths. Here is another, it's the same city on the land beyond seven seas, the land which was mentioned in multiple mythical stories. So Max indirectly stumbles upon the mythical land and mythical city and survives the apocalypse. Shit I am a writer myself. There also can be an explanation on how life is still there on earth after its whole environment is destroyed. Let me try again with the Mad Max survival story. There was plot of one Mad Max game which I had read a long time ago. In this game Max would climb an abandoned oil rig, to save a girl kid. The oil rig which would be kilometer long in height. Nuclear explosions would occur and Max would witness a huge tsunami which will hit the oil rig. Max on the top of oil rig would fly off due to explosion. Max would wake in the middle of desert and not a thing would be visible due to dense fog or radiation of atomic bomb. For a few seconds he would get visions as if he's on an island in the middle of nowhere. Ground will start shaking as if there is some sort. Max would realize he's on a metal part of oil rig in ocean, whose water level is above the atmosphere. The thing he assumed as fog was a cloud. Suddenly he would realize he is on top of a nuclear explosions mushroom cloud, and he will see lot of other mushroom clouds nearby. 
Max would start fainting due to lack of breathable air. He will faint and would wake up in an underground chamber. The people will tell him about the chamber which covers the whole earth, built by the Soviets. Was probably the reason why Soviets went bankrupt. Hey I am not trying to make fun of Soviets, it's just a sci-fi story. Relax, now the whole chamber is run by two rivals who fight for supremacy, Snesurema and Stavos. The citizens will also reveal it to him that, they found him while trying to collect the water. The water which comes only once in a month, sucked down by few turbines, over which the cyclones, tornadoes and other type of storms pass, the storms are holding a little bit water which is sucked in by the turbines, probably that's how Max was passed into the nuclear chamber in water and ended up in a bucket of one citizen. Snesurema forces will apprehend Max and will take him to their leader. Where he will learn that 100 years have passed since the explosions, and he didn't age or was lying on the top of nuclear torpedo. Snesurema have a myth that Earth is near the sun and will burn in 20 years, they need to access the huge chunk of metal which lies in the territory of Stavos. As per their information there is a spaceship lying in there. Which can be used to fly off to another planet. So they send him on a secret mission, to infiltrate Stavos territory, where Max finds a mechanic who has built a full interceptor through a blueprint of a car. Max encounters Snesurams, who reveal him what they believe Stavos are planning to bomb their territory. Until Max's cover is blown when he tries to invade the metal scrap area. While getting hunted down by Stavos, he steals the mechanic's interceptor and escapes. Upon arrival at Snesurema's hood, Max learns that Snesurema now believe that Max was an undercover spy sent by Stavos. All the while Max plans to escape the underground chamber which has five floors and he's on the lowest one. At the same time Snesurema and Stavos gather all their troops and attack each other. Max finds the a blueprint of Tsar nuclear bomb in Interceptor which is the exact same diagram, shown by Stavos as spaceship. Max realizes that no faction can win this war as it will result in planet being blown off. So in all this combat Max drives his Interceptor fighting off both the forces of both factions in vehicular combat and steals the main conductor of Tsar bomb, all the while escaping towards the top exit in his car. But the exit is the main water pipeline. So Max takes the risk. He is flown up through the water in the second section of all four. This section is full of animals, wildlife, and plants. It is it here ally the jungle. How would Max escape to the fourth and final chamber will remain a mystery. Until next time, your friendly neighborhood random guy.